All right, everybody. How are we doing? Captain Ross here. Uh, I figured after our uh, incendiary incident that we had yesterday that I would go over briefly uh, after some of my t findings and testings here this morning. Um, go go over briefly what to do if your compatriot finds themselves uh, engulfed in flames and and her and horrifically on fire. <laughs> oh oh man. So. Uh, I definitely think one of the first things to be discussed and pointed out is that it seems that if one of us <laughs> is caught on fire, we are uh, knocked unconscious pretty instantaneously. And, you know, you could wake up periodically, but only for, you know, a second or two and you are unconscious. I, I, I think the fire is, uh, is, is, is too intensive of a pain source. Um, for our poor bodies to withstand. So, if someone's on fire, um, they will be helpless. They cannot help themselves. They cannot help anyone else. Uh, they are in need of assistance from the outside world. That is for sure. That's that's step one. If you're on fire, <laughs> you, you are you are helpless. Um, if you see your teammate on fire, they are helpless, and they you know, they certainly need your assistance. Unfortunately. Um, because they are a source of danger. As you get ever closer to your compatriot and attempt to, you know, extinguish the flames on their person, you will put yourself at risk for being set on fire as well. Uh, so it's extremely, extremely dangerous. You need to take your time and be quick about it. <laughs> you know, when, it when it comes to a situation where your friendly is on fire. So we have our uh, test subject, Captain Ross, downrange. Uh, the effects of the AI being set on fire are far different than the effects of us players being set on fire. That's something we should we should keep in mind as well. Um, thankfully, it doesn't seem that fire kills is too deadly. You know, it's certainly a thing that can incapacitate someone. It's certainly something that's dangerous. Um, that person that's on fire cannot end it on their own unless they are conscious and able to roll around prone, which often, as far as my testing indicates here um is seldom the case so you know people need assistance how to go about assisting them we'll go we'll go over here you know we'll, we'll go over that in just a second here goodness so we've got a uh, our our assistant here with his with his basket full of molotov cocktails uh pretty nasty pretty nasty the range on these things pretty gratuitous pretty gratuitous the ai like to throw these occasionally um more often than not, I will not be throwing the Molotovs at you because they are a little, they're a little, you know, strong, if you will. Um, usually, though, you know, it, so, you know, be wary, be wary. Fucking the AI can throw them whenever they want. <laughs> you know, that that's the reality. That's the reality. So, I'm going to huck this Molotov at the direction of, uh, of Captain Ross over yonder. Boom! And you can see it is devastating, absolutely devastating. You probably, we've probably seen these huge clouds of smoke and so on before. So you know, you're like, oh my god, what was that huge explosion? Someone's down. Look over there. Oh my god, you know, our friendly is down and he is burning. You can tell by the fire and the smoke that person is on fire, most certainly. So what to do? I think the safest way to go about it is approach from the head, and very similar to diffusing a mine, you want to inch ever and ever closer until you can get that health menu open. You know, inch a little bit closer, press H. Inch a little bit closer, press H. And I would recommend approaching from the heads or the feet. <laughs> that, that's, that, that, is, that is what I recommend. Ideally, the, the top of the torso or the head seems to be, seems to give you the best chance. Um, our medical range here is pretty, is pretty lenient and pretty far. And you'll see here, when you open up the medical menu, no matter what limb you go on, because it seems like they all catch on fire uh, simultaneously, so it doesn't really matter, you want to pat down fire in advanced treatments. Once that's done, you'll see this brief animation, which will play over and over and over, you know, until the fire is extinguished. Um, presumably, if there's other individuals helping you, this will take less time. If it's only you, this is working as intended. You are making, like, whether it's making checks to see if you're extinguishing flames per body part every five seconds, or if it's, you know, it just takes whatever, whatever it is, like eight or ten rounds of, of this healing. Um, it is what it is. It's intentional. Once it's done, it will open up the health menu for you again like this. Boom. And, the, and those pat down fire options will go away. That's that. It's all it's all intentional as far as I can tell. Um, at this time, homies, you know, 
slow bleeding lost lost some blood really he's fine like this looks pretty bad but i'm it's only slow bleeding from like the occasional medium cut the majority of the damage will be thermal burns and, and things of that nature so usually they'll be in a slow bleeding state so there's no need to rush there's no need to panic someone can be you know seemingly resuscitated from being on fire pretty well so if, if, if they have any additional injuries on top of that that's a different story but you know at least like just being set on fire doesn't seem like the end of the world um does have a good chance of stopping your heart though yes as, as as we're finding here so don't forget your cpr but usually once that fire is extinguished on whatever person you know right and they don't have any other uh extenuating injuries or, or whatever um just checking their heart rate and doing a round of cpr should be enough to rouse them because they've only lost some blood and they only have slow bleeding so they're really yeah boom just like that the chance of resuscitating them when they're only you know but they only lost some blood, incredibly high, incredibly high. And then you can start bandaging them up, and boom, all's well, all's well. It's very, very scary for the person that's down, because all they are is unconscious and screaming and burning. Um, and for everyone else around them, it's scary, because you have to approach their burning their burning carcass and, <laughs> and, and pat them out. Um, but I think it looks a lot scarier than it is. You just want to be incredibly careful when you approach, you know, an individual that's on fire. Um, inch up, inch, 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 go for that health menu. That's the, you know, press H to get that health menu open. That's the best thing you can do. It's the best thing you can do. Um, those of you that have your sapper qualification, you know a thing or two about inching up on mines or explosives to defuse them. Very similar mantra here. Very similar mantra here. Um, I've had a very, very excellent success rate. Just, you know, being carefully creeping up and, uh, and going with that padding procedure. Going with that padding procedure seems to work, you know, foolproof. Takes about a half a minute to a minute. You know, right? Especially, at least, at least if you're on your own. But it does get done, and the person's status when they come out of it is, you know, not a big deal. Not a big deal, really. Um, at least with, at least with least armor and a helmet. At least, at least. Uh, very good, very good. That's our brief, you know, firefighting tutorial. If you are, if you manage to find yourself on fire in conscience, rolling around like this will actually help put the fire out as well. Um, just the problem is, usually when you when you take a Molotov to the to the face, it uh it knocks you out cold, <laughs> which is not good, which is not good. But that's yeah, that's that, that's that. Very good, very good. I'll see y'all next time. And remember, only you can uh keep your fire team members from burning to death. <laughs>